Hey, what's up everybody, this is Ray. In this screencast, I'm going to show you how you can create a RESTful interface for your model objects using Vapor, a popular server-side Swift framework. To understand what I mean by this, imagine that you have a collection of interesting data, like acronyms, for example. You might want to create a web API so that other apps can consume your interesting data. For example, someone might want to create an iPhone app to list your acronyms, or maybe someone wants to create a web interface for the same thing. Well, you might think, well, I'll just create a web API that lets me return my acronym objects as JSON because that's a nice intermediate data format. And I'll create various methods to allow me to create acronyms, read acronyms, update acronyms, and delete acronyms. That's basically REST in a nutshell. The idea of separating your app into independent resources, like an acronym, for example, and providing methods to perform operations on those resources, like create, read, update, and delete. Usually, you provide access to these resources via a nice URL scheme, and you make use of HTTP methods like get, post, patch, and delete. One of the nice things about Vapor is that it makes it very easy to create a simple REST interface for your model objects. The easiest way to understand this is to see it in action, so let's dive in. I have a Vapor app here that has a simple data model object called Acronym, and the ability to store it in a database. I want to create a new RESTful API to access this model object, so let's start by creating a new file called acronymscontroller.swift, and let's regenerate the project with Vapor Xcode. I'll open acronymscontroller.swift, import Vapor and HTTP, and create a new class called acronymscontroller. Again, I want this class to expose the acronyms object as a RESTful resource. Vapor makes this really easy. All I need to do is make the class conform to resource representable. To do this, I just need to implement a single method called makeResource. This returns a generic resource, and we need to specify the type as acronym. Here we return a resource, and if we jump to the definition, we can see that we can configure multiple different ways to access the resources. Note that some of these methods are marked as multiple, which means they work with a list of objects, and some are marked as item, which means they work with a specific object. These two different types have two different method signatures, as you'll see later in the screencast. Let's start simple and just implement one method for now, the index, which is meant to list all acronyms. I'll specify index for the method name, but we haven't written that yet, so let's take care of that now. The index method is of type multiple. Methods of the multiple type take a request, can throw, and can return a response representable. I'll add some simple code to return all of the objects as JSON. Now I'll switch back to main.swift and create my controller. To register the routes, I'll call drop.resource, pass in the root path I want for the resources, which is acronyms in this case, and then the name of the controller object. If I build and run, I can now use rested to perform an HTTP get to slash acronyms, and I see the list of acronyms as JSON. Nice. Let's take a step back and think about what we just did. We could have just registered that route manually by calling drop.get acronyms handler index. If we're just implementing a single method like this, it doesn't really matter which method we would have used either way. But usually when you're creating a RESTful API, you want to create a lot more methods than just the one. You might also want methods to create a new object, get a particular object, delete an object, and so on. Vapor has a protocol to help us with this called resource representable, and it gives us two benefits. First, it saves us a lot of typing. Second, it enforces that all of the resources that we create a RESTful interface for use the same URL schemes and HTTP methods. To show you what I mean, let's create the rest of the RESTful interface. First, we're going to need a helper method on request so we can easily create an acronym from JSON. To do this, I'll first create an extension on request that has an acronym that could throw and returns an acronym. It will check if the request has JSON and abort if it doesn't. Then it will simply create a new acronym from the JSON. This is easy because the acronym object already has an initializer that takes a node. Next, let's create a route to create a new acronym from JSON called create. This method is also of type multiple, so it has the exact same signature as the previous route. Inside, it will use the helper extension method we wrote to try to convert the acronym based on the JSON in the request. It will then save the acronym to the database and return it. Because our model object conforms to response representable already, it will automatically be converted into JSON. Next, let's create a method to retrieve a particular acronym. 
This time, the method is of type item, which means that it's specific to a particular item and it has a different method signature. Specifically, the route will take a second parameter this time, which is the acronym to retrieve. You may wonder how that works. Well, it actually demonstrates a cool feature of Vapor and its type safe routes. What Vapor does for you when you set up a route like this is it looks up the acronym based on the ID passed in the URL from the database. And it actually pulls in all the information for that acronym and returns to you the resultant object. For example, if you go to slash acronym slash one, it looks in the database for acronym of ID one and pulls in all the data for that acronym into the object already for you. If there's no such acronym with that ID, then the route will fail automatically. Since Vapor did all the hard work here for us, we can just return the acronym. Next, let's create a method to update an existing acronym. Again, this is type item, so it will take an acronym as a parameter. Inside, we'll try to get the new acronym data from the JSON, then update the short and long to the new values, save the acronym, and return it. Finally, we'll create a method to delete an acronym. This is also of type item, so it will take an acronym as a parameter. This one is pretty simple. We just call delete and return an empty JSON dictionary. Now we need to update make resource to point to all our new methods. Notice how this is a lot easier than having to register a ton of routes and remember to be consistent about what paths and HTTP methods to use. All right, let's test this out. I'll first use rested to send a post to acronyms, passing in JSON for the short and long form of the acronym to add. Nice, I see the result. Now I'll use rested to send a git to acronyms to see my full list of acronyms. All right, I see my new acronym there. Now let's try getting a particular acronym by issuing a git to slash acronym slash 17, where 17 is the ID of the acronym that we just created. This works nicely as well. We can also update an acronym. I'll send a patch to slash acronym slash 17, and I'll update the long form to something new. All right, it works. Finally, I'll delete an acronym by sending a delete to slash acronym slash 17. I can verify this works by sending a git to slash acronyms again. All right, that's everything I'd like to cover in this screencast. At this point, you should understand how to easily create a RESTful API for your model objects using Vapor's resource representable protocol. At this point, you may be tired of all this JSON and ugly HTML, and you might be interested in making something that looks a little bit nicer. Well, that's the focus of my next screencast. We'll be looking into beautifying web pages with Skeleton. In the meantime, I hope you get some much deserved rest. I'm out.